folks back in the Boss Man Show here with George Ivory from UAPB, Golden Lions out of SWAC Conference, Pine Bluff, Arkansas, to be a Zach coach. What's up with you guys over there in Pine Bluff, man? Hey, we just trying to stay safe, man, and don't get this academic straight. And we had a voter registration together uh, this past week for the athletic department. We thought that went well. So we just trying to stay involved in the community. Well, Coach, let me take you back to March. Uh, that was my birthday, March 11th, when everything went crazy. I was at the Atlanta Hawks game. They told me the season was suspended. And so uh, were, we, were you guys in Birmingham when that all went down? And how did you all deal with that, going from playing the sweat tournament to having to go back home probably on spring break and try to get guys academically to stay on track after they're after, after they back home to own devices, Coach? Well, one thing about it, uh, we didn't make the trip to, to the SWAC tournament this year. Okay. But no, overall, you know, we, we kept the guys focused with academics for the upcoming year. And we did a great job academically. You know, our whole department worked good with the kids when they finally hit and said that we were not going to be able to, the tournament was not going to be put on. So I think the biggest thing was I think a lot of teams were disappointed, but we knew it was about the safety of the athletes and the coaches and the staffs. Uh, so, you know, our kids had to buckle down and get a, a new way of really getting in here concentrating on academics. And that was our biggest focus. Most definitely. You know, Coach, the academic advisor probably played a big role, as long as your, your sister coaches as well, because, you know, when the kids used to be in, on campus, going to class, and if you miss a class, you make them go run a hill or run a mile or something. It's punishment. But they're at home now. They can log in whenever. Yeah, I just look at on Blackboard. They didn't find out the grades. But how was that with the academic advisor and your staff about to make sure those young men, while they're at home, you know, about the accountability of you guys saying, you're going to run for this, <laughs> keeping them focused, man? <laughs> Yeah, that, that you know, and I think that, you know, I take my hat out. We had a great group of guys when it came down to academic. I think this was the first year that we had over eight or nine guys to have a 3.0 GPA. And, you know, and, and like I said, you couldn't tell them, say, hey, you missed that class. So we tried to call them at least three times a week and just make sure they were logging on and making sure they doing what they were supposed to do. And, and these young men did a great job of doing that. Most definitely. Now, Coach, you know, how did you guys go about trying to tell your young men about, though, you know, we, we both been their ages and the 18, 23 year old dudes, you know, they like to go out on dates, go to movies or the mall, and you know how that stuff goes. So how did you get them to understand that, hey, you got to say no if you want to say, say yes to, because, you know, that no can save your life down the road, because, you know, it can save the team's life, you know, because, you know, you never know how this thing going gonna to hit, hit somebody. So how do you make them understand that, hey, you, you got to say no right now, and you might want to do these things, but it'll be out later once all this stuff die down a little bit here. That's one thing we talked about over the summer, too, with those guys. When you, when you come back to school, we want you to be focused, and, you know, a lot of things that we could do last year, we can't do now. You know, a lot of dating and trying to, you know, talk to this young lady and that young lady. Or, you know, we can't do it right now. And I told him, you know, you got to be worried about your safety and your teammates' safety, your, your teacher's safety. So that's been a big thing we've been pushing with these young men through text messages. Make sure every morning you wear your mask, you got, your, you know, sanitizing your hands. And so it, it's been big with us as a staff to make sure we send this message out every day to our young men cause to make them stay focused. And sometimes we just ride through the parking lot. If I see somebody, hey, man, get that, let's get it on. I blow my horn, you know, cause like I tell them, we might can run, you know, for this COVID if you ain't got that mask on. Got so, that right. <laughs> <laughs> you got that right, Coach. And, Coach, I know when I was back at home, the strength coach probably played a big role to get these guys to give them some, some kind of a shade because, you know, everybody don't have a hoop in the backyard and go to a hoop or a park. So how's that keeping the young men in shape? Because I know you had, you don't want to get them back to campus and they're looking like, you know, <laughs> Sean Kim out the lock out there. <laughs> yeah, so what we did, he did a great job with them. You know, we called them and uh, – we tried to push it all, like I said, through the phone message and text message, doing certain things because a lot of their gyms was closed back home. And we talked to them about push-ups, jumping, jump rope, things that you can do in your yard, old school, jumping the crates, jump a bench, you know, old school things that we did back in the day we was coming up. We have all this technology. So, you know, we had to jump Definitely. bench and, then, you know, leg weights and jumping leg weights, you know, so – we went back to a lot of old school stuff with the young men, let them know how we did it back in the day. 
Hey, that's some best stuff from back in the days. It's classic. Still works to this day. They all these technology, but man, that stuff worked good. And it, it, it guys got the job done without all the massages and the ice baths we got today, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> Yeah, you already know. And, you know, Coach, I, I love the fact that, you know, you guys have been the swag, man. I love the conference. You know, Coach, I went to Tennessee State. You know, we know OVC okay. ain't the same like it is in the swag of the MEAC. So talk to our fans in Atlanta about how it is to have that swag flat flavor going to a swag road game or a home game. And you guys lead, lead, lead league in tennis. You always got to get the tennis over there at Prime Bluff. So talk to the fans in Atlanta about swag ball and how it is. A night, a night of swag with the vibe and the environment of being around our great people, man. Well, one thing about the swag, you know, in the MEAC, I think that it bring a lot of enjoyment, you know, to see the, uh, the black conferences. But when you're talking about an event like what we do over here, uh, our cheerleaders involved and our SID, they do, a, they do a great job of getting everybody involved from a regular DJ to a band, the Greek life at, on, at the game to see them strutting and stepping on the side. I think there's so much enthusiasm going on at the ball games, you know, It'd be, you know, you, you have to stop people from asking, hey, can we participate at halftime? This, because, you know, it's just a great environment, and we're going to roll to the swag, man. We look forward to going to the crowd, and, you know, it's just that, it's just that atmosphere is so great. Well, definitely, and I say it's good because I say, you know, you played in the league, and this is Hunter played in the league at Mississippi Valley State, your alma mater, so it's cool to have two guys, you know, coaching the league who played in swag ball, so I know you guys have a special special kind of feel about it because, you know, you all, like, born and bred original OG swag ballers, man, for real, for real. Yeah, and, and me and Lindsay, went, we go way back. Same high school coming up in Jackson, Mississippi. So you know, we you know, I worked at Jackson State. He played at Jackson State. So we go way back, man. It's just a a family atmosphere. When you look at the swag, you know, right now you had like Mo Williams at Alabama State. He's a Murrow graduate. Uh, Tamika Reed is a Murrow graduate. At Jackson State with the women. Uh, Don Brown is from Jackson Callaway. Wayne Brennan. Jackson. So it's just a great time, man. You know, to see all these guys involved in the swag now. To understand what they missed, especially the guy that didn't go to the HBCU. How we do it? How they say how we do it? How they swag and the swag is. Yes, indeed. You know, said, thank God we're from Atlanta. You know, I can go over to the AUC and go over to Clark and, you know, Spelman, of course. But I said, going to Tennessee yeah. State, man, I just felt like, you know, we was we had a great time, but we go on the road, man. It was just so dull and dry, man. I'm like, man, I'm so bored. Like, I, I, I enjoyed the football <laughs> class. We played against the black schools, but we played like the little over there, like, man, so, God. <laughs> you know, it's a, the, the whole vibe is different, Coach. You know how it is, man. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's, it's a different environment. <laughs> yes, it, environment. yes, indeed. And you got about y'all about to get even better when you add in Bethune and Florida and M next year. So you know, it's about to really be popping off in the, the swag. But the travel, Coach, is what gets me about the conference. You know, you, it's already tricky. Then you add the Florida piece, Texas, Arkansas, man. Y'all spreading over the whole South for real, for real. Yeah, and this. That's one thing we've been talking about in our head coaches meeting is that, you know, the travel is going to be big. And we, we're trying to work on some things where one year we might not have to travel there to, 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 to Florida. And one year they might not have to travel to us in Texas. So I think it's going to be very interesting next year with them coming into the league. And uh, I just think it's going to be very exciting times in the SWAT. And, Coach, you know, you've been at HBCU school, having a lot of young black men on your roster. How are you talking to your young men about, you know, the social injustice right now? You know, we had in here in Atlanta again, in Clayton County, a, a issue here in Atlanta. So just three times this year in Georgia already. So how have you talked to your young men about, you know, watching them sell and saying that, hey, you got to carry a little bit differently. Which I'll take off your pound bluff. You're just a young black man in Arkansas. You know, you got to really be safe and be – vision of what you got going on because you know even if you do everything right coach you know it's still ending badly for you unfortunately yeah one thing we talk about is you know trying to do the right thing you know uh i always tell them if they get stopped or pulled over try to be manable you know and not be resisting anything because like i said still could pop off but we talk to them a lot about that and you know they talk about the things that's going on in this country and i told them to make a difference we have to get into this voters registration thing we got to vote to make a difference. And they all got on the bandwagon. We decided to do this voter registration thing. And, and I was happy to see a lot of the athletes got involved with it. 
Most definitely, because that's so important. It's so, so important for so many reasons. And getting those guys to mail in ballots. I don't know, I'm going to live in Arkansas, of course. Make sure to get the ballots requested from, from back home and sent off in time. Because it's so, so crucially key for, for you guys, man, for all of us, man. This is, this is major, Coach. You know, this is like really life and death right now for us. That's right. You're exactly right. So, you know, we all as, you know, young adults, older adults like me, we trying to stay. We trying to stay safe from the COVID and everything else that's social injustice right now. But you know, I tell these kids, if you stay focused, you know, within that academics first, good things gonna happen. And coach, tell us about some some of your newcomers coming into your roster this year, coach. Some guys you want to spotlight for us. I listen to make sure you look out for your guys when play gets started here real soon. Okay, we got, we have a young man about five eight. We call him about about five nine, named Joshua Johnson from Phoenix, Arizona, is going to be very, very exciting. You know, he's going to be electrifying. If you can remember Trey John Jefferson that played at Tech Southern a couple years ago, he's kind of like that kid. Very exciting. Uh, Jalen Jones is going to be pretty good for us. Uh, so we got uh, T- Tavon Johnson going to be pretty good from out of Houston, Texas, about 6'8". So we're we really looking forward. Then we had a lot of guys that come back from injury last year. It was the the worst year we ever had for his injuries. You know, we got three key players coming back. And one guy was preseason all swag last year, broke a bone in his foot. So we we very excited about this basketball season. And coach, I was recruiting via Zoom for you guys this time around. I know uh, some schools told me they've able to expand their reach, doing it via the Zoom, saving money on the recruiting budget, which makes the ADs very happy, of course. And so, uh, how was that for you guys recruiting via Zoom? I don't get those face those face guys face to face, but also the Zoom piece. You know, that get you get some guys you wouldn't ever you get to talk to or touch because you can show them the cameras virtually now and get to them that way. And that's one thing we did. Uh, we did a great job uh, during the year of communicating with a lot of kids that we signed. We had been talking with them the whole year. And uh, once COVID hit, we had to go to the FaceTime and uh, text and a whole lot and just communication. And we ended up getting those kids. So that really helped us a lot during that time. And like I said, saved us some money budget-wise. But, you know, it, it, it was a good time to really learn another way to communicate because, you know, we had to talk face to face sometime on virtual uh, FaceTime because we get so much now with text, you know. And and I I wasn't tech savvy one time, so I had to learn really quick. <laughs> Same you know, here. Yeah, so you know it was a great time, man, to meet these guys and their family through that uh, virtual time and show them our campus. We had to go take pictures and set things up, videos for the parents that want to see the dorms. Uh, just our campus period, which we thought we did a great job with that too. That's one I got for you, Coach, is this. Uh, you know, I, I know you guys in the swag, man, got plays guaranteed games, and we are learning hopefully next week about what the season will look like. So if you got to move this, the dates back in the guaranteed games, you, you might miss out on. So are you reaching out to other teams trying to play some games on, on the back end of that, man, hopefully to make some money? Because we all know what it means, basketball, football, and, you know, women's basketball raises the money for everybody else at, at HBCU school. Yeah, and, and what we've did uh, with them getting ready to move back, we've made contact with a couple of universities that we think that we're going to miss with the, if they move the date back. And we are trying to schedule some dates with them now within uh, between that other time frame to keep that money coming in. Uh, so we're just, man, we're just blessed. And we're trying to stay safe, man, and, hey, and trying to win us a championship. I hear that, Coach Avery. Coach, good having the show, man. It was fun to catch up with you, man. And we got to do this again real soon. I'll be keeping my eye on you guys over there playing blood for real, Coach. If you, when you come to Montgomery, I might come out and see if we got to play in my Montgomery because that ain't too, too far from the house either. All right. We we'll sure appreciate Look for you. All right, Coach. Have a good talk to you real soon now. All right. Thank you very much. All right. It's George Ivory on the Boss Man Show. Grab a hold of big breakfast flavor at Hardee's. Try two breakfast sliders for just $2.99. Get Applewood smoked bacon or freshly grilled sausage with fluffy eggs and golden melty cheese all on a toasty little bun. Good morning. Start at Hardee's. Available now for a limited time at participating restaurants. Tax not included. All right, folks. Back on the Boss Man Show. On the Howard Bison head coach, King Blakeney on the show with me. Coach, good to talk to you again. How's life up there in D.C., man? What's up, Mr. Boss, man? How's everything going? Everything's good up my way. How about down your way? Coach, it's been good. I've been enjoying my uh, now six-month vacation, so I'm enjoying that. Uh, I've been uh, 
playing a good guitar coach, uh, you know, learning how to do be handier now. So I've never home this much. So six months and five days of being home, man, I'm becoming more useful, I guess. <laughs> I understand. I guess that's, uh, you know, during this period, I, I guess picking up a foreign language and learning to play an instrument is a uh, very productive thing. Most definitely. And, uh, Coach, I want to talk to you, you know, uh, man, you know, I'll be real with you. On my birthday, March 11th, is when I found out the NBA season will be suspended. So you probably in Norfolk, the MEAC tournament. So how was that when it came down for you guys? They told you guys we're not playing anymore for your, your young men who have put us in so much work not to get you to compete for that MEAC title and having to go from on campus to virtual learning and keep keeping your grades up, knowing you at Howard, a great school like that. So talk to us about that whole process for you for like March 11th on through all the through all the shutdown, how that went for you and your team and your staff there. Well, Pulse, man, it, it's, uh, it was different for us, man. It, it was, uh, you know, we, we started to hear the rumblings a little bit. The NBA shutting down the Ivy League tournament had been canceled. Uh, you hear other rumblings of other leagues that are starting to cancel. And we still don't really know what this COVID-19 thing really is. We, we, we're hearing about it, but obviously, you know, being right now on September 16th, um, we're further along, along down the road right now, but, you know, at the 11th of March, we had no idea. Um, I was walking around at that time. I had a, a hand sanitizer bottle because going through the handshake lines before games and after games and shaking the referee's hands, I, I just kept, you know, my little bottle under, under, mm. under my seat. And uh, I, I didn't know. I didn't understand that it was airborne. You know, there was a lot of information that we didn't really understand and know at that point in time. So, um, you know, we had played our, our first game against uh, South Carolina State and won our first game. Came back the next night and played a really good uh, North Carolina a and team and had a tough loss against them. And you know, going into the press conference that night, someone had asked, you know, like, what's next? And I said, well, what's next is, you know, us understanding what this COVID thing is um, and how we are going to be like the, the new normal from that point, because it was, you know, you knew it was serious, um, but you just didn't understand the severity of it at that point in time. And uh, the next day, I think, you know, around 3.30, 4 o'clock, the MEAC tournament gets officially the rest of it canceled. Um, and we get a phone call from, you know, our athletic director saying that, you know, school was going to be postponed and everyone had to immediately depart campus as soon as possible. Um, so it was a upheaval uh, in, in, in the quickest form, uh, you know, for our guys and for our students at Howard, um, where we, it was just a sense of urgency. We had to, you know, you know be off campus. So we had to really, I think, come together as a university and our president, Dr. Wayne Frederick and our athletic director, Carrie Davis, um, you know, with their leadership helping us, uh, you know, one, get back to campus safe, two, uh, get all our players home safe. Um, you know, that was kind of the most important thing, Mr. Bossman, at that point in time was just the, the, the welfare of our student athletes and making sure they got home and they were okay with their families. Most definitely, because I know, like in Georgia, the case is still kind of high. I know DC had it kind of high there for a while. So let me ask you, this, how 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 how's the cases in DC right now? Because I know that here in Georgia, we still have some issues with capacity at the hospitals. Still not being reported as much, but it's still issues here in Atlanta for sure. How's it in DC right now? Yeah, things have plateaued off a little bit, you know. So um, that's a, that's a good sign, and uh, you know, I think we we really attacked it early on, Mayor Bowser. Uh, our mayor here in Washington, D.C., has done a great job with her leadership, and uh, she's been, you know, one of those talking figures on national TV, on CNN and MSNBC, and uh, those national uh, conversations about, you know, major cities and, and COVID-19, and uh, she's done a really good job, and, you know, we've had protests in Washington, D.C., we've had the COVID, and uh, under her leadership and her administration, uh, she's really positioned us to be able to move forward, I think, successfully uh, in getting our economy back, getting our uh, people back to work as, as safely as possible. And uh, her leadership has been very, very well noticeable um, during this period in time. And Coach, ac academically, how was it for your young men going from on campus to virtual learning? Because I know 
if guys aren't used to that, it, it's kind of hard for them. I know you can check for them on Blackboard. They, they miss a class. You can't run them. You know, you can't have them go run a hill. You can't get on them like that, Coach. So they're at home on the devices. No, mom and dad may not, may not do that to them. So how is making sure the young men are accountable uh, to keep doing, getting the work done, keeping the grades up, and that's how to do running hills at home for you, Coach? How was that, man? <laughs> Oh, man, I had a halogen at everyone's house, man, and I literally would show up at like six o'clock in the morning and be like, hey, man, you better do your classwork. <laughs> no, it was a, it, that's a great question, and, and, and thank you for asking it because it allows me to talk about our academic support staff and some of the support systems that we have at Howard that we have in place. And, uh, you know, our student athletes ended up the, uh, for the year at, at around a 3.0 GPA for our basketball team. So we're really happy and pleased about that and proud about that. Um, we have an unbelievable um, student, you know, assistant kind of uh, uh, system here by Paul, Mr. Mr. Paul Bowden, Morgan Fisher, Dr. Morgan Fisher and her crew. Um, they do an unbelievable job and, and they stayed in touch with our players. Um, we had daily study hall still, things were virtual. So it took them a while to get used to it. Um, but, you know, to their credit, they really, locked in and uh, finished up the semester on a strong note. Oh, definitely. That's very important because, you know, like I said, Coach, you know, I, I, I think how is at, at school academics, you have to be good there. You have to be on your stuff. So I'm glad to hear that your young man got 3.0, knowing the standard that Howard holds them to because playing basketball in, in Howard is where you really are a student athlete. You're not out there for basketball only. You have to learn and play ball at the same time. Yeah, no, Mr. Bossman, that's, that's exactly right. And I think, you know, U.S. News and World Report just came out uh, this week and rated us the 80th best university in the country um, for our academics. So, you know, kudos to Dr. Wayne Frederick and his administration, uh, you know, and the things that they've implemented and, and have done. I know that the school when he got here was ranked in the hundreds, and uh, he's taken it year by year and has increased that, that university ranking uh, and has gotten it lower, and now we're down to 80. So, you know, let's see if we can continue to – that kind of print and that momentum uh, and anything we can do and add as a basketball program to bring visibility and, and light to the university, you know, we're excited to add that little, those little things that we can add. Most definitely. And coach also, Another guy on your staff is probably important. Strength coach, because you know, your guys are back home. They're not, in your face, of course, I have facilities there, so have to make sure the guy's not just so far out of shape. So how much time get them to say, can I do stuff virtually for as like running and at home and doing things in the yard, using bands, all kind of things where they can kind of stay in a little bit of shape, not maybe get to a, a hoop per se, but kind of, you know, do things you can do to without basketball while you're shut down at home. Yeah, you know, you know, boss man, honestly, uh, one of the things that we talked about was that, um, you know, we, we kind of left it up to the families and we didn't ask them to do anything. Um, I wanted them to be safe because I was, as a, as a parent, as a, as a husband, as a, as a man, I was terrified. Um, you know, for the first three or four months, I probably went out four or five times, period. And that was only to go to the grocery store. Um, so if I was, you know, very hesitant to kind of, I guess, start my, my life up again and, and, Asked, you know, for me to, to start getting uh, reacclimated to society a little bit, um, I, I damn sure wasn't going to ask those guys to start doing things. So, you know, the NCAA had these uh, rules and regulations that we couldn't really talk about um, or do Zoom workouts or do Zoom, uh, you know, anything like that with our guys. So, you know, if their families allowed them to go out and do it, I didn't ask them to go out and do anything. I just wanted them to be safe with their with their families and keep, keep them safe and keep their families safe uh, for the most part. Um, so, you know, thank, thankfully everybody kind of, uh, you know, did that. They stayed safe with their families. And, you know, one of the things we noticed, we got back to school a couple of weeks ago um, as, a, uh, as our, our basketball team. And, uh, you know, our guys were incredibly out of shape and still are. Um, so that's, those are things we're still going to have to work through a little bit as we move forward towards the season. And coach, on the Zoom calls, you know, we've kind of had another pandemic too with social injustice in the country. You're sitting in D.C. We can talk about what happened in D.C. and other around in Atlanta here as well with uh, Ray Shaw Brooks and this happened Saturday in Clayton County down the road from me and also in Mount Arbery. So how are you talking about your young men about, hey, 
when you took off your Howard Bison gear, you're just a young black man in D.C. or wherever you're from because you have to really mark, carry it a little bit differently because, you know, even if you do everything right, you say yes or no, so you can still, unfortunately, have a negative outcome for us. So how do you use this time to teach your young men about being a young black man to come up in this world and so they can give them lessons for life now going forward, going forward from now on? Yeah, that we, we, ended, we implemented three kind of initiatives for our program. Um, and that's, that's, you know, thank you for asking that. Um, one, we, we started a um, student assistant fund. And when we talked about our, our, our students being displaced from, from campus, um, what the student assistant fund was, we did a three week virtual um, fundraiser where we had DJs that were virtually doing, you know, uh, kind of gigs for us once a week. Um, to raise money, and we did that with a, uh, along with a, a merch um, kind of package where people could buy merch and also donate to this student assistant fund that we were um, using to help uh, contribute to our, our students, not even our student athletes. And the fund is set up where, you know, students that were um, one displaced had to leave abruptly. Um, their families might have been um, you know, put in a tough uh, situation or challenge because of COVID and lost jobs or got behind in bills or whatever those circumstances were, this student assistance fund um, that the university had in place that we were able to contribute to um, would be able to help, help those student af students and, and student athletes. Um, second, we did a, um, a voter registration uh, kind of uh, situation with when we all vote. And when we all vote has been kind of like the, you know, most popular uh, voter registration um, group since, you know, COVID and, and over the last six months. It's, uh, you know, Chris Paul, Michelle Obama, and others are a huge part of uh, when we all vote and, and people that have started that, co-founders have started that. So we were the first actually athletic team uh, to jump on board and be, uh, you know, associated with them, which we're really proud of. And uh, our goal is to, you know, reach back in the communities of color, young men from the eight ages of 18 to 25, and uh, which is the hardest uh, demographic to, uh, you know, to, to vote uh, that doesn't vote, and to see if we can use our platforms of social media to get those young men to vote. And the third initiative that we did, which was great to, uh, to your point, was we did a speaker series and we've had over 22 speakers so far. And uh, what we did is we would have some of the most engaging and, you know, interesting kind of uh, speakers from our community uh, and thought leaders and leaders. Um, Xavier Williams, who's the highest ranking black from AT&T, Grant Hill, uh, one of the owners of the Atlanta Hawks, uh, Paxton Baker, who's one of the owners of the Washington Nationals, Jerron Smith, who's started Unanimous Media, with, uh, with Steph Curry. We had um, Dr. Lynn Elmore, uh, who's a professor at Columbia University and, you know, Bill Roden from uh, ESPN and, uh, you know, all the different books, Million Dollar Slaves. And uh, we had great conversations with these guys, especially during these periods of George Floyd, Aubrey Brooks, um, you know, Breonna Taylor, um, you know, we Black Lives Matter. So during real time, we were able to have some brilliant and I think insightful conversations with these thought leaders um, to kind of, you know, one, um, talk about it, but two, um, to get more insight and to have dialogue to get whatever they were feeling inside of them um, out and, and to understand a little bit more what those things were that they were feeling and what those things were that we were experiencing as a nation. So, um, it was a, a remarkable, you know, five or six months that we were able to take and kind of, you know, grow our players uh, and also kind of grow our program in a way uh, that bonded, I think, all of our guys in a way where, you know, we were able to include like, some of our new guys and, uh, and grow and come together as a program. And coach, uh, let's talk about recruiting wise, coach. You know, how was recruiting via Zoom? I know you, you know, you guys love to get to see people in person, face to face with them, and touch them, and see their families in their in the home. So, how was recruiting via Zoom? And is that something you'll keep going in the future? And it would it increase your reach to get guys that you wouldn't usually get to talk to by using the Zoom and showing them the campus via a, a virtual tour rather than being on a, there for an official visit there. Yeah, we, we had to tinker with it a little bit, boss man, to be honest. Uh, it was sort of an experiment, uh, not doing it before. We've 
had a presentation pitch kind of when students came on campus or kind of, uh, you know, the presentation that we would have over the phone. But, you know, to do it virtually was something that we kind of had to, uh, to kind of adjust to. But it was something that I thought was really beneficial for us. Um, you know, we could be in California, we can be in New York, we can be in, you know, Denver, we can be in Phoenix, we can be in Texas, all in a day. And, uh, you know, that's something that if you're recruiting uh, and going to do home visits, unless you got a private jet, uh, you know, you're not able to do those kind of things. <laughs> right. So uh, it allowed us to be in many homes over that period. And I think touch more people and, and bring more awareness uh, about Howard and Howard University's men's basketball program to uh, a lot more recruits. So we felt that it was really beneficial for us and uh, would love to continue to do it just to be able to touch our recruits, even if it's our weekly phone calls, just to reach out and say hello and check in on them and see how everything's going with them and their families. And Coach, talk about your new, the new class of coming in. A lot of guys, you you guys, you guys, I know the right of getting a uh, Mr. Maker to come with you. So discuss, discuss your, your new class coming in here and what they mean to their program going forward as you uh, get this Bison program up and up and rising some more. Yeah, we we have a, a large class that came in. I think we have ten or eleven guys that that are in this freshman class or newcomers that are part of our Bison family, um, and it's obviously led by you know McCore Maker. Uh, who is the highest profile recruit to an HBCU um, probably since, you know, I can't even remember, maybe one of the guys that did it at University of District of Columbia uh, back in the early 80s. Um, that might have been as, uh, you know, more decorated than McCord, but we're very fortunate and lucky that he chose us uh, to continue his education and to play basketball at Howard University. Um, he's somebody that's going to give us, I think, a lot of versatility um, and a, I think a, uh, a presence where, um, you know, our younger guys, it speeds up our program. Um, it really does. Um, we were able to get a transfer in Nogel Easton from Purdue University. He's a young man that started 65 games at Purdue. Um, that's going to come in right now. And, you know, he's, uh, you know, his impact on, on our program is going to be probably – just as big as Maker or bigger. Um, he's a guy that, that went to the, you know, Sweet 16 and Elite Eight. And uh, I don't know how many guys in the MEAC that have transferred in have had a chance to play in the Sweet 16 or Elite Eight. So he comes from a winning pedigree. Um, he's a competitive kid. He does think everything the right way. And, uh, you know, his impact on our program is going to be so sub substantial. Um, we're really excited about it. You know, we have Raheem Ra Ra from Baltimore uh, Poly High School, who we're excited about. He's a point guard, uh, an incredible playmaker. He can uh, find guys in traffic. He can knock down shots in, in, in while he's open. Uh, he's a guy that, that won three consecutive championships and probably won a one on fourth if it wasn't for COVID. Um, so we're really excited about him. We have a redshirt freshman that we brought in from DeMatha Catholic High School uh, that's going into his second year, but did not play. Um, he's a seven foot kid. He's a guard, um, really shoots it, uh, puts it on the floor. Uh, Steve settles his name. So really excited about him. Jordan Wood, young man from San Antonio, Texas, who's 6'10". He can play anywhere between the one through the four. Uh, so we're excited about him. We just brought in a lot of guys and a lot of versatility. We have uh, Sam Green transferred from Drexel. Uh, he's a DMV product that played at Bishop McNamara. So we're excited to have him back. He's a, a grad transfer. He's going to bring some leadership and uh, some experience to our program. Uh, Devin Richmond uh, out of DeMatha Catholic High School uh, was at Howard Community College and uh, transferred to us. And, uh, you know, he comes from a winning pedigree at DeMatha. And uh, his team won the, the JUCO State Championship at Howard. So we're excited to have that kind of, I think, uh, competitiveness and, and winning uh, pedigree there. Uh, so we're really looking forward to this year. You know, we're excited to have a chance to play. Uh, our administration has given us a great opportunity uh, to put us in a bubble right now uh, where we go from their building where they're staying at to the court. And uh, they're doing all their classes remote. So um, the guys are working hard right now and looking forward to the, you know, the 2021 season. 
And Coach, speaking of that, uh, you know, I know in the media you have to play guaranteed games uh, to raise money for, you know, women's basketball, men's basketball, and football, right, raise the money for HBCU schools. We all know that. So to move the date back to the 25th of December, the 4th, whatever it's saying, uh, well, what's us the plan to kind of make up those games to bring in the money that you guys need to, to help everybody else around, around the university? Yeah. Well, man, that's a great question. And uh, you know what? We still don't know that answer to that. We're figuring that out on a day-to-day -day basis. I had that conversation with my AD. Um, because, you know, if we go and play in South Carolina, South Carolina is a hot spot. So, uh, you know, we would have to go play South Carolina and then come back and quarantine for two weeks. We got Northwestern on our schedule, Big Ten game uh, in the lovely city of Chicago on December 29th. Um, we go play them, uh, you know, which is a, a, a money game. Um, you know, we have to quarantine for two weeks and we start the MEAC, you know, schedule on January 2nd. So all of those things are still fluid and up in the air. Um, you know, I, there's been several discussions of bubbles that are going to be taking place. One is potentially in Indianapolis, one in Houston, one in Washington, D.C., one at Mohegan Sun. So we've been in contact with uh, several of those bubble situations and uh, just trying to figure out what works best for us and the timing of the schedule. Um, so right now, we're still up in the air with a lot of the different things on scheduling uh, with our non-conference season. Yeah, and I saw some coach. I saw some the contracts, man. I, saw, I they look terrible. I, I saw the COVID clause in the contracts where if you play, it's this number with fans. If no fans, this number plus plan for your travel. I said I feel bad for you guys because you know I saw uh, some contracts from from high major people here. And you, you probably know what schools I'm talking about here in Georgia. I saw the contracts. and I'm like, nah, <laughs> I went, that's ugly, you know. So I hope that we can get it get done without those poison peel clauses that, that, that are skewed their way only for sure. Yeah, no, no doubt. You're exactly right. Uh, <laughs> there, there's clauses that if, if we play with fans, it's X amount of dollars, which is a nice payday. You could say 60 to $80,000 or $90,000. And if you don't have fans in the, in the stands, it's $20,000. <laughs> so uh, it, it makes a difference. And uh, our administration, Kerry Davis, Mr. Davis has been unbelievable. Um, his leadership during this period in time has been, uh, you know, needed and uh, he's handled everything like a champ. And, uh, you know, his thing, his whole thing is that, you know, we are about our student athletes well-being and, uh, you know, we should be thinking about more a regional schedule. Don't worry about the money. It's about the student athlete safety. Um, if we can get the games in, great, but let's think about like, you know, here in D.C., we have American University. We got George Washington. We got Georgetown. We got Maryland. You can go out to Maryland. Uh, you know, we have, you know, University of uh, Baltimore County. We have Navy. We have Loyola. So just in that plain 45-minute vicinity, we got seven, eight schools around here that we can, we can match up against, maybe play home and homes just to get games in. Uh, it may not be the traditional kind of year, but, you know, if we, you know, put our resources together and uh, I think, you know, not leave, leave the egos behind a little bit to make this a, uh, something that can be successful, I think it's something that can really work. How much did you enjoy a coach year one to MEAC, you know, going through it? You know, I love HBCU basketball. Now, I'm a TSU grad, Tennessee State University. We're in the OVC. I, I think it's boring playing those OVC schools. It's not, you know, I, I enjoy playing the smack of the MEAC because of, of the vibe it is. So how was it for you coaching your guys, man, going up the MEAC schedule, man, from going from down from Daytona way up to Norfolk up to you guys, man? So how was it, man, year one in the MEAC with the tough coaching? No, no easy games in the MEAC, no matter what the record was. No easy night. So how was that year one for you, man, going through that, that, that gauntlet there? Yeah, it was difficult. It, and it, it's still kind of difficult to kind of to stomach a little bit. You know, we, we were 4-29 and on the year, um, and we took our lumps. Um, but I understood that and, knew that and knew that going into the season. We lost over 50 points through graduation and transfer before I was even hired. So I understood that it was going to be a difficult and challenging year. Um, and the way that – uh, you know, our president, Mr. Wayne Frederick and uh, Mr. Kerry Davis, they wanted to kind of build the program was through 
uh, through the high school route and bringing in kids that are great academic kids, kids that love the game, kids that fit uh, the mold of being Howard men. So, you know, following that kind of blueprint, we didn't want to go older and uh, do the grad transfer route or do the transfer route. Um, we took high school kids and, you know, had those guys playing, you know, 25 to 30 minutes for us. And I think we, you know, by taking our lumps this year, we were able to take a step forward. Uh, now those young men have a year under their belt of playing experienced basketball. They've gone through the gauntlet of the MEAC, which is an extremely difficult league uh, that doesn't get enough credit. We have some excellent coaches and some really talented players that are in the league. And, uh, you know, we're looking forward to competing against those guys this year and having a chance to, uh, you know, I guess, uh, you know, make it a run at this thing. It's, uh, it's a really a great, I think, experience for our young men and uh, very, very challenging uh, in the MEAC. So we look forward to having this experience coming up this year. Well, Coach, I'll definitely be cheering for you guys. I love, I love the colors you wear because the colors will remind me of Tennessee State to a degree, the Howard Bison colors. So, you know, I got to represent you. I need some gear, Coach. I'll wear your gear, man. I'll wear the gear. Send it to me, man. I need some swag, man. Some Howard swag, man. I need some. I got you, man. I will got you. <laughs> I got you. Yes, indeed. With well, folks, it's King Blakeney here on the Boston Man Show, coach of the Howard Bison out of the MEAC Conference. Support those guys and donate to the universities. We'll help those, those guys out. They're doing big things up there in D.C. in the DMV for sure, people. Check, check, check them out. We out. Sally Beauty's new all-in-one hair color kits make it easy to color your hair at home. Get everything you need to color for beautifully radiant results. Loved by professionals, open to everyone. Sally Beauty. All right, folks, back in the Boss Man Show. Friend of the show, Coach Frank Martin with me. South Carolina game, comes out of the SEC. Coach Martin, how are things with you guys in Columbia, man? Doing great, man. Just excited to, to kind of be back to normal. Uh, you know, campus, you got students, and they're walking around. So uh, town looks good again. And then obviously having our players – uh, in and, and being able to be on the court. It's what brings me a peace of mind because uh, it's the only thing I'm, I, I, I do is spend time on the court with guys and try to help them grow and get better. So uh, they've, been, they've been tremendous in, in their, their commitment to working and uh, given the circumstances and their energies have been great. So uh, it's you still got to be real careful now. Don't, don't misunderstand me now. We're, we're still dealing with, with an animal that that uh, no one's known how to tame yet in uh, this COVID stuff. But, uh, but at the same time, uh, it feels good to be around the guys and on the court and competing and teaching and having some fun. Now, Coach, I, I know – I want to ask you about your health, Coach. I know you, you said you, you caught COVID, so I want to know how you're doing physically and how you're recovering from that and, and how, how's your health. I'm doing great. I appreciate you asking. Uh, it was interesting. Uh, it was uh, – uh, I was getting ready for knee surgery, knee replacement surgery, and part of the pre-op uh, was to, to, to get the test done uh, for COVID. And my wife and I have been so careful with leaving the house and who we were around. And, you know, and, uh, and the last thing I expected was to be positive, but I was. And it kind of freaked me out. Uh, thank God my wife and kids were all negative. Uh, but then, you know, you go into isolation for 10, 11 days, man, that, that, that stresses your mind, man, that, that uh, uh, you know, you, you got to be away from people and, um, you know, and your own children kind of look at you like, like, stay away from me, uh, <laughs> you know, and understandably so, but it, it messes with your mind. And so that, that was a hard, hard one to deal with, but that's behind us now. And uh, um, so I'm, I'm excited uh, and uh, I feel great. Never had any symptoms. Uh, so, you know, knock on wood, I, I, I hope we find a vaccine and a cure for this thing uh, as soon as we can. Thank God for that. I knew when I saw it, it made my heart drop when I saw you had it, Coach, you know, because I, I love you and you, you've been great to me in the show, man. I wanted, I was like, oh, my God, Coach Martin, guys, but I'm glad you're healthy. I'd asked Fig about you. He told me you were doing good. He said he had saw you, so that kind of made me feel yeah. better. Like Fig told me he had saw you. Yeah, he – uh as soon as I, you know, because I, I kept it really private. Uh, big reason I kept it really private uh, was I, I didn't, my mom's been by herself uh, down in Miami since the lockdown back in early March. 
And uh, I didn't want her to stress, uh, you know, being in an apartment all by herself, stress uh, as to what I was going through. So we, we kept it really private until I got out of the isolation and I tested negative. And then I told her and then I went public about it. But, uh, but I, I shared it with Fig. So Fig was aware. You know, Fig's my man. So uh, uh, he, he knows every, every step I take. He, he's right there with me. Yes, indeed, Coach. I was talking about off the air. You know, I saw you March the 7th in Nashville, Vanderbilt, and then I, I went on my merry way going back to doing the NBA. Then on my birthday, March 11th, I got the text that, the, you know, the NBA suspended. And you was, it was in Nashville getting ready for the SEC tournament. So talk to us about that, Coach. How was the time to tell your team and then your young men that the season's over with for right now and then having to go back home and then spring break and then going from on campus to virtual – how did you guys manage that that swing semester there, Coach? Knowing that not un, knowing the unknown that we that we didn't know in March there. Talk about crazy times now. It's uh, you know, when we got on the plane uh, and headed to to Nashville, um, that's when everything was starting to move for this COVID stuff. A lot of unknown, like what is this? What are we dealing with? Uh, but you know, we were at the hotel and. I was actually at the game, uh, the the first round games, watching Arkansas play Vanderbilt, and we were playing the winner of that game. Uh, and uh, that's when the news broke about Rudy Gobert and 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 the NBA shutting down the season and um, or at least suspending play. Uh, and then that night, I went back to my hotel room and uh, selfishly, I, I was worried. I was like, man, I don't know if I want to bring my team into a building to play a game, you know, mm -hmm. God forbid one of my guys gets sick or I get sick. And how about my family back home and my staff and their family were away from them. And, and that's when the news really started pounding on the severity of, of uh, this virus. And uh, so, uh, but if we played, I would have shown up and, you know, we would have coached the game, but uh, we got a call that next morning and said, uh, which was a Thursday morning, and, and the word was, hey, it don't look like the games are going to be played. Stay tuned. I got a call about an hour later and said it's off. Uh, and, uh, and then it was just like pandemonium. Uh, and from that, not everyone freaked out, but trying to manage everything in front of us. And we got on a plane, flew back home, got home Thursday night, met with the players uh, that we had told the players that everything was going to be shut down. So we met with the team uh, Friday morning, and by Friday night, all the players were back in their hometowns, uh, and, uh, and and then away we went, and we none of us knew what we were dealing with, and uh, everybody just kind of on their own uh, academically. Uh, our school had to make a shift to online classes mid midstream. Uh, mm -hmm. Our players had to make the adjustment because you know there's a big difference between in person and online. Definitely. Big big difference, and. And you're trained to be in a classroom, and handle learning and getting work done a certain way. And then all of a sudden, that thing just flips on you from one day to the next. But, but our guys were awesome, man. We set a school uh, a program record for team GPA over a semester, uh, even dealing with this adversity, and, uh, which was a credit to our guys and our academic folks. But, uh, but you know, uh, we all learned. We dealt with it and learned, and we're in a much better place now. And, Coach, you know, for young men, it's – in 18, 24 years old, no, I'm in my 30s. So for them to get this experience, now what life can throw it their way. So all the lessons you've taught them as men off the court is coming to fruition now in 2020 mm -hmm. in one time. You got to be responsible for what life throws you your way. Your academics, that get that done. Your family and basketball, if possible. So I think it gave you young men some perspective going forward for sure. Absolutely. I tell players all the time, the only thing that you're going to mess up is if you're not prepared for change, change is coming. Yes, like, indeed. You know, we all want a routine. Yeah, we all want a routine and be comfortable with our routine. But change is coming in what we do. And we, when change comes, we have to adapt and be prepared to, to manage that moment. And uh, this year, the change was this COVID. It changed how we live. I mean, I change, I'm coaching in a mask now. You know, that's, that's, a, that's a different different animal than – I'm not used to that. It's uh, you got to get used to it, but that, it is what it is. That's a change we got to adapt to. Uh, Most definitely. Uh, our players uh, went from, like I said, in person, like all 
18 to 22 year olds, man, they're living life, man. They're, they're loving it. You do that. You remember what that was. That was a fun time of our lives, man. Yes, indeed. And all of a sudden it goes from doing all living life that way to being locked up in a house and, and not getting out. And, uh, you know, so it, it, but everyone had to adapt and, and deal with the change. And I, I think our, I couldn't be prouder of our guys for the way they managed it. And, Coach, for you guys trying to teach your young men about, you know, we have all the social justice and unrest in our country here in Atlanta right in our backyard with a few different bad situations happening. So how do you manage teaching your young men about what's been going on in our country with the police brutality, the racial divide we have going on? So how did you use the Zoom opportunity to teach your young men about this and how we can move forward from this as well and, and be better as a country going forward? I, I've been – I've been talking to our players about that since 1985 when I started coaching in the same neighborhood I grew up in. Uh, I, it, it's, uh, you know, this is not something that just started, you know, three months ago. This, this is something that, uh, that we, we have to constantly speak about. And uh, that's one thing I do. Uh, I've always spoken to our team and our players about uh, the good, the bad, and the ugly and, and how to manage all three and, and how, how to understand, how to take advantage of, of what is there uh, so you can make a better life and, and, and the responsibility that all of us, you know, because you're in college as an athlete, you don't realize it at the time, but you're, you're, you're one of the few that's getting a chance to move forward. Yes. And, and, uh, and it's so important that they come. I speak to them about that all the time. Like, man, you, you, you have an unbelievable opportunity when you get to college to make it better for everyone after you, to, to empower yourself to make it better for your own family and everyone else that, that you can touch. And um, so I've been talking to our guys about all these things uh, since, since I was a JV high school coach. And uh, um, it's, uh, that's, uh, that's what I learned in my neighborhood. Uh, it's, it's the way I was raised. It's the way I, you know, living in my neighborhood, it's the way I continued to coach uh, in that neighborhood. And uh, uh, so I'm, I'm, I'm ecstatic, man. I'm ecstatic that, that, that our players are comfortable enough uh, that we can have these powerful conversations. Always have, always. But one of the guys I had incredible conversations about, uh, about all this stuff was Sindarius Thornwell. Well, guess what? He was player of the year, too. So that, it goes hand in hand, man, having the confidence to have these conversations and to grow and to listen. Uh, and, and it kind of goes hand in hand with having success uh, with what you do in life and uh, so th this, I think this is a great, great time uh, because everyone's willing to express themselves and everyone's willing to listen. And, and what we, we, we have to stay in a positive place because uh, this is where I disagree with a, a lot of people. Uh, we're only a divided world, in, a divided country in social media. You know, if, if we stay out of social media, we actually got people that are really good people and believe in each other. We just got to get some stuff fixed, man. We, we, there's some stuff that we got to fix. And, and it's not about hurting people's feelings. It's not about uh, passing the blame game. It's about just being comp like appreciative and having a little empathy and sympathy and, and being understanding to the struggles, man. And, and, and then once we do that, be willing to address it and fix it. Not stop, stop talking about it. Stop trying to say all the right things and then nothing happens. Uh, you know, it's time to go fix some of these things. And uh, so I'm happy because I think I really feel uh, that there's movement and, and action going to go fix some of the things that need that need to be adjusted. And coach, and I've been inspired because, you know, um, thinking about my parents born in 19 in the 1930s, 1940s, they didn't have all their rights, coach. You know, I was born in 87. Mm -hmm. I, can't, I was born with mm -hmm. four rights. And so. <laughs> I know from what my parents told me as a youth and what my godfather tells me now, like, you know, I feel like it's 33 years old. I have opportunity to affect change, affect people positively here in Atlanta and beyond using this, this radio show I have that I've been, I've been blessed with. So I've been inspired, Coach, to do more than I have done in the past, you know. So I really want to help be a part of the change and solution going forward, Coach. And I feel like it's opportunities for us all to come together as one and make – the right changes that we should have been done years ago and get it done talking about school. We're, we're, we're closer than people think we are. It's not, not that far away on either side. There you go. <laughs> you know, there we're not that go. far away. We just got to talk about there those things and get where we agree on and work on things we don't agree on. But I feel like we, we can make some happen if we, if we all commit to a coach. 
Absolutely. We're, we've come such a long ways from where, the way things were in the 40s and the 50s and even the 60s. Such a long ways from those days. Uh, but we still got a long ways to go. And, and the mistake that we all made is we probably just kind of – see, I got this saying is whenever you're working to fix something, you can't stop halfway through the job Most or the job thing. gets twice as hard. You know, it, it's, it, and we kind of took a step back and just took some stuff for granted. And, and now the job's gotten a little harder. But, but that's okay because I, I, I believe in the people of this country. I believe it, whether, whether it's a Hispanic or a black or a white, I believe I, – I think about this one. This, this is the part. The greatness of this country is that people live different ways in different parts of this country. Yes, indeed. And it, it, we don't all live. You go to other countries, everyone lives the same way, same values, same culture. You know, the culture of the West Coast is different than the culture on the East Coast. All you got to do is go to the Raptors, and that, that'll tell you the yes. difference just in that game alone. It, you know, the way we live in the South, man, it's different than people live in the Midwest. And, and, and you know, it's just it's, there, there's different flavors and different cultures within our own country. Uh, and, and we can't make people in California live life the way we live it in South Carolina, just like Californians can't make South Carolinians to live life like they live it out there. But we have to be at peace to understand that we're all different based on where we live, based on our culture of that region, and based on the culture of our families and what our background is and then be willing to understand each other and accept each other for those things. I truly believe in this country, and I believe in the people of this country. And we just, we just, you know, we're going through a moment. Hey, listen, I tell players all the time. It's, I tell players all the time. Boss, man, sorry, I lost you for a second. Are you good, I said, Coach? I, I got you. Okay, I, say, I tell players all the time. There's nothing better than getting married. Staying married is really hard. It's really hard. Right. And, and, and there's days when you're married that you're trying to figure out, like, you know, how am I getting to tomorrow? But definitely. Because, that, because you got love in that marriage, man, you sit on, you talk with that, your wife or your, your, your significant other, and, and you have those conversations and you get to a place where you realize, like, you know what? No wonder we love each other. And, 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 and now your marriage gets stronger because you went through that moment. That's what we're going through right now, man. We go, this country's going to be perfectly fine because it's got too much good, too many. Every time we got an issue in this country, a hurricane, a flood, a tornado, an earthquake, what do we all do? Come together. Yes, sir, man. Black, white, Hispanic, we don't care. We load up and we go help the people that were hurt. We're dealing with this right now. And we, we just, we, we got to understand uh, we the, the one thing that we have to do, man, is we got to be sympathetic and empathetic with with the, the, the struggles that this country put black folks through for so many years. And if we can just be willing to embrace that emotion, then we can understand why there's frustration. I had a pastor, Pastor Brett Fuller, shared this line with me. It's as powerful a line as I've ever heard. Pain never chooses what door it exits through. And, and it's right. so powerful because we don't paint when pain comes out, you don't tell it how to come out. It's coming out and it comes out differently for different people under different circumstances. So, um, but, but it's uh, keep doing what you're doing, brother, because sharing that love, it's the only way that's going to help us eventually get back to, to being just a great country. That's made up of great people. And coach for you, uh, I know you guys love to get on the road and recruit young men. How was the recruit via Zoom this time, coach, and getting to have the <laughs> relationships via, the, via Zoom and having to do virtual tours of campus via Zoom? How was that for you and your staff recruiting guys this time around? You know, I, I, I hate FaceTime and I hate Zoom calls because I see myself. And when I see myself, I see how old I've gotten. And it depresses me. But, uh, coach, but you're still a good, handsome man, coach. Oh, man. <laughs> Man, I got no hair left. The little I got left is all white. I'm, I'm like, uh, it's it's uh, it's depressing when you got to look at yourself for so long. It, it, it's it's you know, it's like, what happened? When, when did this train just run me over this way? But uh, but no, it's it's you know, again, change. We've all had to improvise. We had to adapt. So we've gone from having to go to gym, to gym, to gym, 
uh, and then phone conversations to these Zoom calls. And we've had to learn how to uh, show what we are, who we are, what our campuses are like, what our what daily life is through a computer. And uh, we've had to make these adjustments. And that's on us. We got to adjust because it's it's what this moment has called for. If we don't adjust, you get left behind. And we've all had to adjust. And um, uh, I've enjoyed it. I, I, I'll tell you what's happened. It's made recruiting old fashioned in the sense that uh, instead of being worried about just sitting in gyms, watching guys play, we've been forced to actually build real relationships Most definitely. Uh, and, and engage in real conversations rather than the petty. Uh, I offer you a scholarship because you can dunk basketballs conversation. We've, we've been forced to, uh, to, to express ourselves and, and, and show who we are and, and, and have deeper conversations with the players. So it's allowed us to not be worried about the one we, we think we can get, be worried about the one that we feel we can get Most because definitely. we feel that relationship. And it's allowed the players to really understand who's committed to recruiting them based on who's on these Zoom calls with them. It's made it more personal. So I, I, it's, uh, I think it's all worked out pretty good. And Coach, talk about your class this year. You have you've recruited coming in, some young men, the newcomers that you have. We help you this year as you guys get ready to play here in November here. Yeah, we, we've got um, uh, three first-year players. We basically return our whole team. Uh, two of them are local kids. One's a six foot ten, 250-pound center, Patrick Ariel, uh, who can really run. He's strong. He, he's aggressive. He, uh, contact doesn't phase him. Uh, and, uh, and then the other one is also a local young man. Uh, Javon Benson, he's six foot eight, 250 pounds, but he's got seven foot three wingspan. And uh, he, he's got some natural instincts for shot blocking and scoring. Um, and uh, uh, as, as those guys learn uh, the speed and the physicality of college basketball, uh, they're, they're going to, they got a chance to be real good. They, they both have the ability to shoot. Uh, it's just a matter of teaching them how to play at the rim now. Um, you know, so they understand posting and sealing and, 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 and all the things that come re- offensive rebounding, all the things that come with playing closer to the basket. Um, cause you know, everyone plays pick and roll, pick and roll, pick and roll. So all these big kids in high school, uh, they ball screen and roll, but you know, having to play near the basket is, is new to them. They don't really know how to play in there. Most so we've got to teach them, but, but that's all right. That's all part of it. it we, hey, we got to earn our money, man. We, we got to teach these kids that are become a complete player it's uh uh it's all part of the deal but and then we've got a young man that transferred from missouri state ford cooper uh who's a six foot three guard and he's sitting out this year uh but that's those are three guys we got coming in and we're we're excited about three all and, three. and coach uh for the guys conditioning uh, how they're looking so far uh i know that it probably was at home they couldn't really get to the hoop uh, and they had to kind of do stuff in the yard so how's the how are those guys looking so far as you can kind of get them back in a little bit of shape before you get to here going here in october before the game start yeah they've been great man they they you know they were they were like in cages at back in their homes and limited what they can do and you know they they We've got a great group of guys, man. They're competitive. They, they love being around each other. They, they love wearing our uniform. And uh, uh, as soon as we got back on July 20th, uh, we got back to work. And, you know, you have to ease them into it because it's been five months. So first couple of weeks were very, very easy. And next couple of weeks, we threw in more stuff. And little by little, we've continued to, to, to increase the workload. And uh, they're, we, we're flying around right now. We, we're competitive, and the guys have gotten – uh, back in the weight room, so their bodies have gotten stronger again, and um, it's uh, it, it's fun to watch it. You know, it's because it, I know what my mind tells me about what we can be and the kind of guys we have. And then for five months, like everything got put on hold, and now all of a sudden it's back to fast forward again. And I'm starting to see a lot of the stuff my mind would would tell me that we could be. So uh, it's it's fun to it's fun to watch it right now. And coach, uh, the non-conference schedule-wise, I know you guys. They say they will start on the twenty-fifth. So, does that mean more of the teams that's in South Carolina and North Carolina maybe to play those teams now to kind of make sure you have games going into SEC play in January? So, how's that process looking for you guys right now, coach? Yeah, first thing we got to do now, which every team in the country is doing, is figure out their league schedule. Every conference has to determine uh, how they're going to play their league schedule to keep the same number of games and. 
uh, when to start the conference schedule. Uh, so then we, we know uh, what the window is for non-conference games and then how many non-conference games we can schedule based on how many league games we play. Uh, so, to, for example, the SEC, we played 18. Well, are we going to play 18? Are we going to play 20? Are we going to play 21? I, I don't know what that number is. So our, our conference has to make that decision, which then will allow us to, to determine how many non-league games to play. And, uh, and then once that decision is made, uh, we, the, the, the way it's, I understand it, if you've got signed contracts, you can keep those in place and away we go. And uh, if you've got uh, contracts that are outside the possible dates, uh, then those contracts can be put out for a year and you can go replace it with someone else. So uh, all those are things that over the next couple of weeks we'll, we'll have a lot more clarity on. That's what I got for you, Coach. Um, is this for you? How happy are you seeing your young men in the NBA? Like, uh, you know, uh, Chris Silva, P.J. Doge, and those guys are still going to the playoffs there, man. So uh, I know Chris is hurt right now. So, but how happy are you seeing young men you've coached uh, have success on the, on, the NBA, on the NBA there and playing with the playoffs, deep and deep it, into the playoffs? Yeah, it, it, you know, it was awesome, whether it's, uh, you know, once the bubble got going again, whether it's watching – uh, Udonis Haslam or Jose Juan Barea, uh, two guys that one played for me in high school, the other one played for me when I was at Northeastern, uh, or then watching Rodney Magruder, uh, you know, who played for me at K-State. Um, you know, and then the four guys from South Carolina, Sindarius Thornwell, P.J. Dozier, Chris Silva, and then even Brian Bowen, who never actually played in a game but spent a whole year with us here practicing he's you know just he's one of us um you know to know that we had four four guys that played for us here in South Carolina uh in that bubble uh that was pretty neat and uh um you know and I, I, I tell because it, it goes back to what I preach to players all the time uh you know everyone in life we all get a job the question is can we keep a job oh, and uh all those guys I just mentioned they figured out a way to earn their way into the NBA and figured out a way to keep their job up to this point. So that's uh, – uh, I'm, I'm, I'm excited for all those guys because of that. Coach Martin, I'm glad you're healthy again, man. You look great. I told you, Coach, I know you're going to be fired up ready to go here real soon, man. I'll give definitely for the senior, you, whether it be in Vanderbilt or somewhere close, we'll definitely catch up with you again, Coach, for sure. My man, I appreciate it. I'm a, I'm a, I might throw some Grecian formula on my hair, man, man just to make sure you recognize me the old-fashioned way. Hey, Coach, it's all good. Hey, hey man, I haven't had a haircut in weeks, so it's all, we both in the same boat, buddy. <laughs> I got this hat on my head to cover up my hair. <laughs> all right, Coach, hey, I'll see you, man. Thanks for your time, Coach. Appreciate you, brother. All right, now, it's Frank Martin on the Boss Man Show.